Hey guys, Traffleton here. You want to hear a joke? Windows. <laughs> that's right, that's a good one. You want to hear a bigger joke? Windows update. What's wrong? Seriously, you auto updating now? Windows is notorious for having the worst update system in the world. It's unstable, it breaks all the time, and it's as slow as molasses. You've finally made it through the awful install process. You've set up your computer without making a Microsoft account. But if you want to use Windows effectively, you need to know what it takes to survive Windows Update. Let's dive into Windows' update schedule, how to download updates, and how you might be able to avoid any problems that might happen along the way. Windows Update is how your computer gets updated. For something that's really rudimentary and simple for a lot of other operating systems, Microsoft makes their update process very, very confusing and incredibly painful. This isn't working. <laughs> it's slow and causes tons of problems, ranging from broken partitions, fundamentally flawed protocols like your printer for example, or worst of all, dereferenced files that might make it look like you lost your data, as well as some fantastic anti-features that may or may not have to do with violating your privacy or AI. Each week in the month is assigned a letter, A, B, C, D, and sometimes E. This naming scheme is how Microsoft organizes their updates and how we can use this lettered cycle to plan around how we deal with Patch Tuesday, or the affectionate term for Windows updates. Because one of the core tenets of maintaining Windows is Patch Tuesday, although Microsoft would prefer you refer to it as Update Tuesday, but this isn't a marketing term, believe it or not. It's a derogatory term given to this day by the IT community. <laughs> Patch Tuesday is the second Tuesday of every month, which is week B, <laughs> and is a nightmare day for all IT admins because it's the day Microsoft, Adobe, Intel, and browser manufacturers like Google and Mozilla all orchestrate their updates on one day, hence Patch Tuesday. Of course, Microsoft isn't transparent about this process at all. In fact, they might watch my video and change their mind because they think Windows Update, as it is right now, is way too predictable. I thought Windows 10 was the last version ever. What happened? Well, my friends, a global pandemic happened. The communication for a Windows update is scattered all over the place, ranging from random blogs on Microsoft's website, Microsoft's X, formerly Twitter account, forms, or just random documentation that you might, might leave around. There is no good way to find a real answer about how Windows updates works, and we have to rely on people to basically interpret it for us the way you would interpret another language. Before we formulate a game plan about how Windows updates works or how we try to understand it, I'd rather take a deep dive into a fresh Windows 11 install. When you install Windows for the first time, you just want to go into Windows Update in the Settings app and you want to download as many updates as you possibly can. If you recently installed Windows, there's a number of updates since that version of Windows was released and you're often missing out on critical security updates or even anything that might make your system work better, like your graphics drivers. And also, as an obligatory warning, you might think, oh, clicking this update button, not a big deal, right? Well, Microsoft will instantly make you a guinea pig to test their updates and basically beta test on you for the rest of their enterprise customers when you click that update button. And while your computer is busy updating through Windows Update, you just want to go over to the Microsoft Store and update all of your store apps. All of the stock applications in Windows, like the Photos app or the Mail app, are all installed through the Microsoft Store. And Microsoft did this to decouple these from Windows updates so they can issue updates as needed to these applications. And it's also way easier to update them if you just visit them in the Microsoft Store and verify that all of them are fully updated. <laughs> 
Because all of Windows' stock apps are all independent from Windows updates, it's still important that you return to the Microsoft Store and check frequently for updates. And I know this is really tedious and probably takes it about an hour, but it's worth doing all of this to make sure that all of your apps are fully updated through the Microsoft Store and you get all of your security updates through Windows Update. So when you go into the Microsoft Store, you go down to the Books or the Library section and click Get Updates, and that will instantly update all of your Microsoft Store applications, or if you're a power user who installs applications through WinGet, it is also how you download updates through WinGet. And when you're done with both your Windows updates and your Microsoft Store updates, hit the Reboot button and pray your computer turns on again. This is where the tough decision comes in for the normal user. Windows Update is the only way for you to download your security updates and oftentimes for very dangerous and actively exploited attacks in the wild. But the problem is Windows Update is constantly plagued with buggy, broken updates, Microsoft beta testing crap on their users, or just general features that people don't care about. The question that we want to ask is what's the most optimal way to update Windows while effectively keeping up with Patch Tuesday so all of our stuff is kept secure and up to date, but also in such a way where our stability isn't affected. And unfortunately, there's not really a good answer around this. So what we do instead is we build around Microsoft's update cycle. Because the reality is, as much as people hate it, automatic updates are crucial to keeping your device updated. We want to utilize the fact that Microsoft rolls out Windows updates in stages, and they're not going to hit every single user at once. But at the same token, we just can't sit around and let Microsoft do whatever they want to our devices. Therefore, we need to take appropriate measures to handle Windows Update in a schedule that I sort of use as a framework of how I handle Patch Tuesday, and we're going to start with the beginning of the month. At the beginning of the month, in week A, we want to hunker down and block Windows Update. And Microsoft, if it detects the update's really bad, they're going to block it from getting to your computer altogether. Delaying an update is a way more reasonable approach, and you can actually delay updates as much as you can. But as a preparation measure, if Microsoft happens to disrespect your choice for whatever reason, or if your hand slips, be prepared to back up any data to offline or cloud-based storage. <laughs> if an update goes wrong, you can always restore from a backup. Because after you've delayed your updates, this is when Patch Tuesday hits. Microsoft Issues, the newest Windows update for the month. Be on the lookout for a lot of news websites, or for Reddit, or for anywhere where anyone reports any immediate problem related to Patch Tuesday. I actually look at Brian Krebs' blog, where he actually documents some of the major security issues of Windows, and Susan Bradley's comments from Ask Woody, whether you're using the free version or the premium version. While both Krebs and Bradley reiterate information that's often directly from vendors or Microsoft, they save you the work of having to wade through the mess that is the ancient Microsoft Update Catalog, and it's incredibly confusing. And I think one thing that Krebs and Bradley do really well is offer different perspectives to how we can handle Windows Update. Brian Krebs focuses on security-related issues, and his blog post will often link the original work from security researchers to the work that's done by Microsoft in their Windows updates. Because Microsoft, in their infinite wisdom, doesn't exactly tell you what changed in each update. And if you see any vulnerabilities in Krebs' report, especially if they're popular programs that you use, like say Outlook or uh, any Adobe products for example, Krebs' monthly warning is your nudge to update and why you should probably consider updating. But that being said, because of what we know about Windows, sometimes you might want to take the slow and steady approach, and that's where Susan Bradley comes in. Bradley is very vocal about the instability of Windows, and often has very detailed guides about how to handle it on her blog. If she is still squawking, that is your cue to wait on Windows updates. She usually separates recommendations for business and home users. In my personal opinion, I think she's a little too cautious, but generally, I think she helps strike a healthy balance for home users while making sure they get as many updates as possible. No matter where you get your information from, whether it's from Brian Krebs, or Susan Bradley, or from a literal anime character on the internet, we cannot answer whether updating for you is right or not. 
you need to make that decision yourself. Microsoft will help you a little bit if they block an update, but more often than not, they are going to force it down your throat. So it's important to develop an awareness and discernment on whether or not to accept a Windows update or delay it a little bit longer. And as time goes on, we reach week C. And by one week later, if people are still complaining about a thing that Windows Update broke or a little annoyance that may have been introduced in Windows Update, you can continue to delay the update and just sit week C out as well. But in my opinion, if you get to week C and the complaining has mostly died down, it's probably safe to hit the update button. The sooner you install the update, the faster you get it over with. Well, unless you need to keep delaying it because there's problems. But then we get to week D. Week D is when Microsoft releases the non-security updates for their other software, like Microsoft Office, .NET, or Visual C++. In general, you want to pick these up where you can, unless you're a crank like me and you hate features, and I literally don't care if it's not a security update. Otherwise, you might want to use week D, or week E, as time for you to catch up if you're behind on Patch Tuesday. And after week D has come, the cycle has come full circle. Patch Tuesday is once again next week, and another month has come and gone. At this point, if people are still complaining about issues on the interwebs, download your updates now for security reasons. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is you're delaying updates for another month longer, and you might be forced to install two rounds of updates because it's two Patch Tuesdays worth of trouble. And then we have to start preparing for Patch Tuesday, backing up all of our data, start delaying Windows Update, and the cycle repeats all over again. <laughs> Make sure you've downloaded all of your relevant security and cumulative updates before the next Patch Tuesday hits. And you'll just be doing this forever, unless you stop using Windows. Speaking of not using Windows anymore, let's talk about the annual Windows updates. <laughs> Every year, Microsoft will create a new version of Windows and will often tell people about it on their blog or whatever to alert people of changes. No one reads that, of course. And thankfully, this has gone down from twice a year to once a year. That's not exactly an improvement given how long these updates take and how many useless features are introduced, but improvements are still improvements. What's more, these version numbers are largely invisible to end users. But not only are they invisible, even different versions of things like Windows 10 and Windows 11 look exactly the same. <laughs> Microsoft provides information about Windows 11 support cycle in their documentation and upgrading works seamlessly between versions of Windows as long as your version of Windows is being currently supported. For example, if you're running Windows 10, you want to make sure you're on the last version of Windows 10, maybe thinking about moving to 11. If you're on Windows 11, you want to make sure you're on Windows 11 23H2 of the upcoming 24H2. And if you rarely use Windows, or if you haven't updated in a while, you can get into a situation where you're using an unsupported version of Windows. Let's say you're a Linux user, for example, who dual boots Windows every now and again so you can use QuickBooks and play Call of Duty. <laughs> and in this scenario, Windows Update will not give you security updates because it's been so long since you updated your computer. And we need to update to the most recent and stable build of Windows. For example, if you're running Windows 11 21H2, consulting Microsoft's documentation will show that 21H2 lost its support in October 2023. And this is what happens when you get stuck with an unsupported version of Windows. And if this happens, you can attempt to upgrade using the Windows Installation Assistant. And this will get you hooked up with the latest version of Windows, provided you meet the hardware requirements of its Windows 11. And using the Windows Installation Assistant will allow you to keep all of your data and install in place the latest version of Windows on your device. Alternatively, you can also use a Windows ISO and create a USB stick or using something like Ventoy or Rufus to boot into the Windows installation media of the most updated version of Windows. Then you can upgrade after you give over your license key or verify your OEM key to upgrade in place and preserve all of your data just like you would if you were to install the Windows installation assistant. Now you might be good about keeping your computer updated, you're on the latest version of Windows, 
but let's say you install the latest Windows update and the security update happens to make it so you can't print anything. Maybe it's making performance really bad. People are complaining online that their system is worse after the update, but you installed it. Well, there is a cop out. And if you go into your update history, Microsoft provides a list in order of all of the updates that you've installed on your computer. And they're all assigned a knowledge base or KB ID, which documents individual changes that are made to Windows. And then after reading the Microsoft documentation about the knowledge base and your brain turns to mush after scrolling down that massive list, you want to look for the KB number, that might be your offending update. In the settings app, we want to go to system, windows update, update history, and install updates. From here, you can uninstall the offending updates, right click or double click and uninstall. Windows will also prompt you to reboot once this is done. And afterwards, similar to normal windows update, you want to go in and delay your updates. So that way the offending update is not installed again. And if you still encounter problems, well, that's Windows for you. Good luck next month! <laughs> Speaking of good luck, if you smash that like button, smashing that like button means you get a blessing from the god of Windows so Windows Update doesn't break your computer. What's that? Windows is run by people and not divine entities? Oh well. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have a great rest of your week.